So I'll begin. Uh, hi, everyone here. Uh, uh, here we are to present our talk titled How We Got Into a Unicorn's Private Code Base Through Analyzing Millions of Mobile Apps. Moving on to the next slide. I'm Ashika. Uh, I'm a security research and technical writing intern at CloudSec. Uh, Arshita, I believe you're on mute. Hello? Is it yeah, better? Hi. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Arshita Jain, and I'm working as a full stack engineer at CloudSec. So I love to automate anything and everything uh, related to security. Apart from that, uh, I love to travel and read books. Hi, everyone. I'm Manan, and I work as a cybersecurity analyst intern at CloudSec. And I love to play the drums and play football. Yep. Cool. Uh, so let's move on. Yeah, so the agenda of our talk, our talk is basically divided into three parts. In the first part, we are going to explore uh, what exactly happened with the unicorn that we're talking about. In the second part, we will talk about how we analyze and find vulnerabilities in mobile apps. And in the end, part three, we are going to uh, talk about a large scale study we did of over one million plus apps and the impact. So moving on. Let's begin with part one. The next slide, please. Yeah, so source code leaks have been in the talk, in the news for many years now. And the biggest one that comes off the top of my head is the recent Twitch leak that happened in 2021, where uh, we saw that malicious actors posted on the 4chan forum over 6,000 internal Git repositories of Twitch which contained 200 GB worth of data and 3 million documents. So just by the scale of these numbers, you can understand how big this leak was. And earlier this year, we did a little something of our own, which we'd like to share with you guys. So moving on, let me present to you the big fish. So it was a casual work afternoon for us. We were just uh, doing a normal thing, analyzing top apps and finding security vulnerabilities in them and reporting them to the uh, uh, organizations. So what we found was really interesting. We found that there was this app with, which had 10 million plus downloads in Play Store of a 120 million worthy unicorn that had a really big security vulnerability with which we could uh, basically view their entire source code and do a lot more uh, a lot more things with it which we'd tell you in in the coming slides moving on so let's explore what exactly happened so what happened was that uh, while exploring the uh, the code base of this app, uh, we were analyzing it on uh, uh, this search engine that we built. And what we saw was that there was something called as a GitHub personal access token, which was hard coded into the app's Android bundle file. And it was there for everyone to see and do anything with it. So that's not exactly de desirable, especially not from a unicorn. Uh, a lot of questions might be arising in your head. People might be asking, what is a GitHub personal access token and what can a person do with it? So we'll explore that in the next slide. So a GitHub personal access token is basically an alternative uh, to using passwords for authentication in GitHub using the GitHub API or the command line. So uh, with this token, basically uh, you, you get a lot of privileges and we ran this query as you can see in the screenshot on, this, uh, on the screen. What happened was that we passed the GitHub token that we found in the previous slide and we wanted to explore what scopes uh, is this GitHub personal access token giving us. And uh, you can see the output in the screenshot. Uh, we could uh, see that we're getting admin privileges. Uh, we, we could delete the repo. We could delete packages in the repo. Uh, 
uh, we could change the workflows, we could write packages, we had the repo scope, we had the user scope. So out of all of these scopes, the most important is the scope repo, which gave us full access to the private repositories. So uh, just to give you an idea of what we could do with this scope was, uh, basically we could uh, commit changes to the uh, organization's GitHub repo and push them. We could also invite other collaborators uh, and ask them to do the same. We could uh, mess around with their deployment workflows. We could delete their repo. Basically, in the end, uh, to sum it up, we could do anything with their repos with the scope, with just the scope. And that's uh, a pretty big deal. Now, moving on to the next slide. Uh, after finding out uh, that uh, we could get access to the private repositories, we wanted to see how many private repositories can we actually get access to. So we ran this query uh, that is shown in the screenshot. We passed the token against this uh, endpoint, and uh, we were able to find that we could access the organization's all 26 private repository. And that's... So the impact was pretty nasty. So moving on uh, to the next slide. Uh, and this is what the private uh, repositories URLs looked like. So you could conclude that we could get uh, access to the Unicorn's iOS apps, their APIs, and their normal Android mobile apps. Finally, this is how we got access to the Unicorn's code base. So, after finding this issue, we immediately reported uh, to the company and they acknowledged the issue and fixed the bug. Uh, and the token is now no more there. Uh, moving on. So let's count the mistakes. So how were we able to do this entire thing? There were two major mistakes that were on the developer's part. First mistake was hard coding the GitHub packet, uh, pad token in the source code in the first place. So once we found that hard coded GitHub pad token, we could clone their repos on our system and just view their code base. So till now, we are just able to view the code base. Uh, but where things went really south was mistake number two, uh, with which like they gave excessive scope to that token. And anybody could use it for exploitation, like anybody could commit changes to their uh, private code base. Anybody could invite other collaborators and team, like ch uh, change the entire organization structure and whatnot. So these were two really big mistakes that they made on their part. Now, uh, the talk is titled how we analyzed, uh, how we got access to uh, a unicorn's private code base by analyzing millions of apps. So surely millions of, uh, an analyzing millions of apps, apps is like basically not, it's, it's something a person cannot do manually. It's a Herculean task to do manually. So we automated this process and we did a lot of analysis on our part. And I'd like to uh, give it over to Arshit, my teammate. Uh, who's going to explain about this part a little more in detail. Ashut, I believe you're still on mute. Uh, hello. You can hear me, yeah. right? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So uh, till this point, like many questions would be arising that how did you start scanning the code base of this app? How did you uh, reach to the secret at the first place? First place. So uh, let me tell you a story. Uh, one day, our security team, out of curiosity, were uh, doing a study on secrets that can be found on GitHub public repos. And to our surprise, we found like there were many secrets that people have just hard coded in the public repos, like Stripe keys, Razorpay keys, AWS credentials, and assets like Firebase URLs and AWS Cognito URLs. So this was like a big mistake that the uh, developer have done on public repos. So then we thought uh, these are public repos which anyone has access to. So what about the source code that no one has access to, like mobile apps? So then after doing 
some initial research uh, we did not find any good tool that can just like tell us about uh, secrets that are being le- leaked across the mobile app so then for analyzing the mobile apps we built our own security search engine so here are the steps that we followed to build this mobile app scan so first was we collected the data second step was we decompiled the uh, apps that we collected into readable source code third was we created a set of uh, rules uh, of regexes so to identify the hard coded token and the third was to build a interface where we can just do a regex or like keyword search and it will uh, return you all the results on all the source code that we have collected so uh, let's deep dive into all the steps that we followed to build the system so the first step was collection of mobile apps we thought can we build uh, a system in in which people can just come upload their mobile apps and they can get their uh, security reports uh, and just know the secrets and issues in their mobile app so user submission was the first source that we collected the data from the second sto- uh, source was we collected uh, the android apps o- across the internet so that included uh, apps that were being downloaded from play store and as well as third party app stores so while we were crawling the play stores we faced many difficulties like sometimes we were not able to uh, download apps from certain countries or sometimes there were issues like some apps were not compatible with certain devices but we were able to overcome all those uh, problems and the reason we downloaded the apps from third party app stores was because we wanted to analyze uh, the fake apps that have been wandering around uh, on these th- third party app stores because these apps on third party app stores contains malware or sometimes uh, people have just tampered the certificate and uploaded uh, the apps in the system so currently we have about a million apps that has been indexed in our system so after collecting the mobile app we thought uh, let's like decompile those apps uh, into a readable source code so to do that we used an open source android tool called zx so zx it helps you to a uh, decompile delvic bytecode into java classes from uh, apk and uh, dex files it uh, also helps you to decode android dot uh, manifest dot uh, android manifest xml file so after decompile all these apps we thought let's uh, we stored all these apps into a file system so while we were storing these apps on file system uh, these uh, app size is like uh, app size get increase uh, due to uh, like many things that are there in these apps so we did some optimization on that pass part as well uh so after uh, decompilation we thought uh, let's uh, how do we find the secrets on these uh, source code uh, that we have so for that we started building uh rejexes uh, that can be found uh in, on on the source code so for building those rejexes we thought let's like maybe analyze uh some um, mobile apps and see what kind of uh, keys usually do developer uses uh, de- developer use in the mobile apps so uh, after this we started building the rejexes and there were many difficulties that we faced while building those rejexes like sometimes the length of the key was not fixed other time we were not able to even find the rejexes for it so uh, for those uh, for which we did not find the rejexes for we went to open source repositories like iforthan and truffle after we had all the rejexes in in a place uh, we took all those uh, rejexes or we took all the keys and just put up all the keys in an android file uh, up. so apart from putting it uh, specifically in a class we put it 
all the uh, keys in uh, android dot manifest file java classes and when then after putting all those keys we com- compile the android app and uh, we put uh, the android app through our system so that we can see whether we are able to detect the particular key or not using our reflexes and that that also help us minimizing the false positive so after collecting the apps decompiling it and building the rejects uh, rejects for all the the uh, keys we went and we automated the process so uh, we wanted to provide uh, an interface where people can come just do a keyword or reject search and it will just list out all the results uh, that we found using our source code so and this is how we were able to reach to the unicorns uh, github token using the rejects that we built for a git pack token so this is the one you, this is only the one use case that we found uh, where using a github pack token we were able to reach unicorns private uh, code base so imagine what can happen with uh, all other keys that are hard coded in the source code so let me call manan on stage he'll uh, give you the uh, insights of impact of these secret leaks and why do developer do such mistakes well let's take a deep dive into github pats so we were able to find 159 private repositories from 151 github tokens that we found by analyzing mobile apps that had installs ranging from 100 to 10 million on the play store this may lead to leaking of secrets like database configurations which in turn lead to decline in brand confidence and imminent financial losses by the way all organizations involved with the above leaks were informed of the same and corrective measures have been taken by them well we can lie but numbers definitely won't till now we've been able to find over 1.6 million hard coded sensitive tokens as you can see in the pie chart some of the prominent ones are firebase and aws readable writable buckets dropbox api keys facebook secrets etc now that we materialized things a bit by seeing the enormous number of leaks and move ahead of the abstract part let's now take a delve into the impact of these keys and what malicious actors can do with them the best way to make you all feel the intensity would be able uh, would be to take you through some examples well let's take up email automation first there are email automation services like sendgrid mailchimp mailgun etc let's analyze what happens when the secret token for one of these services gets leaked the attacker gets access to read and send emails from all the accounts associated with that particular key using this key the attacker might be able to start a phishing campaign from the official mailing channels of that organization which which generally would be trusted by the customers or the consumer also the attacker might be able to gain sensitive and personally identifiable information like names emails contact numbers etc of those customers similarly if the attacker gets access to tokens for services like razor pay stripe etc which are payment processing tools they might be able to do very nasty stuff that might tarnish the reputation of the organization and further cause financial damage as well other than that they might be able to gain access to transaction details of the customer and organization like credit and debit card information well now i think all of you would have gotten a gist of how frightful the consequences of such leaks are therefore it would be a good idea to talk about why developers do this well to be able to answer this question in a succinct manner we'll have to look at some common problems faced by android app developers We all know how much of a pain it is to focus on building security and CI/CD pipelines instead of building the actual application and have divert efforts. Other than that, there is an issue of awareness. Many developers think that it is okay for them to leave hard-coded tokens in their source code as it is going to be compiled into an APK before publishing. But as a cybersecurity community, it is our job to make them aware that such is not the case. also companies can sometimes feel that money is better spent in other domains rather than spending it on proper security testing on their mobile apps one example would be an app called clubhouse which became very popular but it didn't implement end to end encryption on their rtc packets thus any attacker could perform a man in the middle attack and snoop on private conversation 
Well, now that we've discussed the problem, let's go through some of the solutions for the developers. Scoping is the most primitive method of stepping up the security of your app. You can do this by assigning the secret keys only the necessary permissions so that even if the attackers get access to that key, the damage is controlled and limited. Using of environment variables to store keys is another solution so that they are not hard-coded in the code but rather embedded into the operating system and relatively out of the reach from the attackers. Other than that, making use of git hooks like Husky to prevent yourself or anyone in your team to even push secrets by mistake. Also, you can make use of vaults like HashiCorp Vault to safely store all of your secrets. Most important of all is building a very robust security pipeline so that your application is secure from development till the time you publish it. Now, I would like to discuss some of our future plans. Till now, our research was more centered towards Android applications. But in the future, we aim to expand our scope to include client-side JavaScript and iOS applications as well. Lastly, I would like to mention uh, a, a tool, which is the Visual OSN CLI, developed by us so that the community can leverage the asset data extracted after analyzing millions of mobile apps. If you want to try out for yourself and see the security score of any mobile app currently installed on your phone, we would encourage you to go to bvigil.com and search for the app there. As you all know, that the first steps towards change is awareness. With, the, with that thought, we invite any questions that the audience might have.